Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Msa al khair jamian. Thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, my name is Dr. Amr Bukhari. I'm an American board certified periodontist. I'm an assistant professor at King Abdulaziz University, and I also practice at Unidense Dental Clinic in Jeddah. I want to thank, first of all, uh, uh, about Dent for inviting me to give this lecture about dental implants. I hope this lecture is going to be uh, as interesting as possible for the audience. And uh, at the end of my lecture, I will be happy to answer any questions. I will provide my Instagram account. If anyone wants to send me any questions, I will be happy to answer that. So uh, as I understand, most of the audience tonight are either dental students or uh, dentists. So I'm not going to be talking so much about uh, the procedure of dental implants because I believe most people following this lecture understand what dental implants are uh, and uh, when we're supposed to place a dental implant. So what I decided to talk about today is something more interesting, I think, at least uh, I believe it's more interesting, and it is the controversies in dental implants because there's so much information out there. Uh, you hear different uh, opinions from different experts uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about the different um, controversies that are out there about dental implants and we can discuss them a little bit. So the first, so the first controversy is a dental implant or a bridge. Now I understand that in dental school they teach you to make uh, bridges for your patients. They don't teach you how to place a dental implant and I understand why they do that. However, I want you to know that in private practice, most patients would prefer to get a dental implant. And we rarely recommend patients to get bridges. And the reasons are obvious. I mean, to play, to do a bridge, you have to grind the adjacent teeth. The patient in the long term can have recurrent decay under the bridge. There's a bad taste, bad smell. Uh, so that's why we always recommend dental implants. I would say 99% of my patients that come to my practice that want to place an implant, I can do that for them. Uh, we rarely have to go towards uh, making bridges anymore. So that's the first controversy. The, the second controversy uh, is what kind of patients can get, can get dental implants. Now, we know that most patients that come to our practice can get a dental implant. Some patients have medical problems or are medically compromised. These are the patients that we are more cautious with. For example, if, we, if I get a diabetic patient, can I place an implant for this patient? Absolutely, yes, I can place an implant on a diabetic patient. However, this patient has to be controlled. So the first thing I do is I ask for that patient to get me the HbA1c test, and that would tell me if this patient is controlled or not. If this patient is controlled, the success rate for dental implants is just as good as a healthy patient that is not diabetic. Now, what if this patient is a smoker? So the first question I ask my smoking patients is, how much do you smoke? Now, there's obviously a huge difference between someone that smokes two packs a day and someone that smokes two cigarettes a day. So smoking by itself is not a contraindication for placing a dental implant. What I need to know is how much this patient is smoking. So the research or the studies on smoking show that if you smoke two packs a day or more, then you're probably better off not placing a dental implant for this patient. But if this patient smokes, let's say a pack a day, then you can place a dental implant for this patient. However, what you need to understand and what you need to tell your patient is your success rate is going to go down from 98% to, let's say, 90% or 85%. So uh, usually these kinds of patients, I make them sign a consent form. Uh, another controversy in dental implant surgery is whether we need to prescribe antibiotics. Now, I'm going to tell you there are four different categories of dentists. The first group usually prescribes pre-op. Uh, the other group prescribes pre-op and post-op. And the third group prescribes only post-op. And the fourth group prescribes no antibiotics. Now, I'm not going to tell you which one is right and which one is wrong, but I can tell you what, 
works in my hands, I usually prescribe antibiotics post-op, 500 uh, milligrams of amoxicillin three times a day for about one week, or augmentin one gram BID for about one week. Now, the dentists that don't prescribe any antibiotics will tell you that they have high success rates, just like the other patients that don't take any antibiotics. Now, I can sit here and talk to you for about an hour or two about all the different controversies, but uh, I was asked uh, to talk only for about 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm going to try to make this quick. So another controversy in dental implants is when to place an immediate implant. So when do we extract a tooth and place an immediate implant? So the most important thing or the most important factor when we're placing an implant to uh, make sure that this implant is going to be successful is primary stability. What primary stability means is that when I place my implant, I need to make sure that implant is not moving, it's not wiggly. So the most important thing is, if I decide to place an immediate implant, is I need to make sure there's enough bone for me to anchor that implant into the bone, right? So what I need to do is take a periapical radiograph and take a comb beam CT to make sure that I have enough bone so the radiograph is going to show me whether I have enough bone to anchor that implant in place and make sure it's not moving around. Uh, so uh, in, in, in my practice, I can place immediate implants on anterior uh, dentition, on posteriors if I have enough apical bone, if the sinus is far away, um, if the nerve is far away. So uh, I usually prefer to do that because that way I save my patients a lot of time instead of extracting and waiting three months and then going back and placing the implant and I try as much as possible to extract and place the implant at the same time and the patients are usually very grateful for that and uh, by the way the success rate for immediate dental implant placement uh, when you compare it to delayed implant placement is about the same it's about 98% so I have a list here of uh, maybe four or five different controversies, but I'm going to make this uh, uh, short, as I promised in the beginning of this lecture. So the last thing I'm going to talk about tonight is socket grafting. Which cases do we have to socket graft uh, and which cases we don't have to do that? So I think most of you understand what socket grafting is, but I'm going to go over it uh, briefly. So basically when I extract a tooth, now I have a space. Uh, which is the socket where that root used to be, am I going to add bone in that socket or am I just going to have the patient go and come back to me in three months and place the implant? So I usually socket graft uh, cases that I'm concerned about bone resorption after the extraction. Now we all know that after an extraction, you're going to have some bone remodeling in the jaw. So basically, if I extract, let's say, 1-1, one, one, and the patient has a uh, thin biotype, and the patient has a thin buccal plate. Now, that kind of patient, I want to make sure, for aesthetic purposes, that this patient is not going to have any bone resorption. Because aesthetically, when I place my implant and the prosthodontist makes the, the crown, I want to make sure that that tooth looks as natural as possible when you compare it to the adjacent tooth. But let's say I'm extracting 4-6, uh, the lower first molar, and there's a, a very thick buccal plate and the patient has uh, a thick biotype. Now, do I have to graft that socket after the extraction? The answer is no, I don't have to do that because I know that this patient will most likely come back to me in about three months and that ridge is going to look beautiful. I'll be able to place my implant without any problems and there's probably, if there is any resorption, it's going to be very minimal. So I think uh, I will end right here. Uh, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. Uh, I will provide my Instagram account. I have two accounts. One is uh, more tailored towards my patients and the other one is tailored more towards dental students and dentists. I'll provide you with both of them. If anyone has any questions, I would be very happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please take care of yourself, and uh, we will see you 
hopefully, hopefully in three weeks after this whole uh, coronavirus thing is over, inshallah.